So how are you feeling? A um, little bit nervous, but okay. <laughs> um, you know, I know. I'm trying to remind myself that it's not a real, you know, perform. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It isn't. It's an experiment, and it's just you yeah. know, it's it's just loads of fun for us. So yeah. I also I have um, uh, a bunch of props. I was gonna mine, but I had pretty much everything, and I feel like it it makes it a bit easier if I'm actually doing something because I'm not I'm not an expert mine. So I've got like well, absolutely. Oh, I love it. Good for you. Uh, no, You're I'm so good. smart. <laughs> I've got, I've got cocoa. It's like. You should see great. in front of me off camera. It's it's a lot of stuff. Well, that's great. There she is. Hello. Excellent. Terrific. Okay, so we're all here. We've just got a few more minutes before it actually starts, but I think YouTube is live uh, already. Um, hello, so YouTube. Huh? I said, hello, YouTube. Yeah, hello, YouTube. Hello. It's always odd for someone watching and they see us getting ready. But, uh, <laughs> okay, so... How are we feeling there, Alexis? <clears throat> Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. I better plug in my computer so it doesn't die. Oh, that'd be good. <clears throat> Midway through. I did a version of my Anne Frank hair. Oh, I, I love it. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, hello. We have another character. You're saying hello? <laughs> No. He's been a maniac today. I'm ready to throw him out. Oh, I hope he's not going to interrupt you. He won't. Okay. <laughs> but just, oh my God. Sebastian, this is not the vet scene. <laughs> I know. You got a bite, of, you got a taste of the acting bug, and now. And now he just wants to be in everything. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. He'll play Ricky. Okay, get down. You said your hellos, now get down. I got my pan. Excellent. Got my knitting. Now you just must be in there. Yeah. Okay. Um, now this is a little unusual this time because we don't have a lot of other people with us in the Zoom room, yeah. but we have a YouTube link up. So um, I'm gonna to talk to those people um, sure. Assuming that there may be one or two people out there <laughs> watching <laughs> on the Zoom, I mean on the YouTube. Um, but uh, so where are we on time? Just a few more minutes. Good stuff. All right, I'm glad we coordinated all that with the. Um, stage directions, so hopefully yes. we're free to fly as much as possible. So once I've done introductions and things, I will just uh, disappear from view. Um, I will hope that my mic coming on and off won't be too disruptive. But one more minute. All right, I'm grabbing a tissue. Yeah. yeah. Interesting, the end of this. Yeah, because I've read it and just like been sobbing and then yeah. other times, well, you never know, right? What's going to come up? <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, right. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and don't yeah. plan anything. Don't plan nope. anything. That's right. That's great. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. It is on the nose now. So I'm going to say hello to anyone who might be out there in uh, the YouTube watching us on the live stream. And to say that uh, you're welcome to join us in the Zoom room at the end, if you'd like to get involved in any sort of post reading discussion. So the um, Zoom link is on the quarantine members page. So do join us at the end if you want. Um, 
I'm just going to start with the land acknowledgement. I'm of course in Newfoundland, as is Alexis. So two out of three this time. Uh, we respectfully acknowledge the territory in which we gather, uh, cyber gathering, as the ancestral homelands of the Beothic, and the island of Newfoundland as the ancestral homeland of the Mi'kmaq and the Beothic. We would also like to recognize the Inuit and the Innu and their ancestors as the original people of Labrador. We strive for respectful relationships with all the people of this province as we search for collective healing and true reconciliation and honor this absolutely beautiful land together. Okay, so hello from Newfoundland. Um, why don't uh, you two introduce yourselves to anyone out there who might not know you? So let's start with Alexis. Tell us. Hi, I'm, a, I'm Alexis Ketting. Uh, as Jeanette said, I'm in uh, Newfoundland and Labrador as well. I'm originally from Ontario. Um, I'll be reading uh, Mama today. Excellent. And Georgia? I'm Georgia Finley. I am from Toronto and I'm reading from Toronto and I am playing Jesse. Excellent. I'll change my... Okay, so um, this piece is um, a very sort of intricate and interesting examination of a relationship between a mother and daughter. Uh, I don't want to say too much at the head of this because it's quite the journey um, and I don't want to spoil that for those that are hearing it for the first time, but at the end I would love to have a conversation about what you hear and see, how it felt for you to, uh, to be inside this story and um, the play is now a couple of decades old and has held up and all of that sort of thing will be really wonderful to, to chew on. So um, having said that, I am now going to disappear myself and continue by reading stage directions off camera. So any get ready to go. Night Mother. Mama hums some odd little tune as she stretches to reach the cupcakes in a cabinet in the kitchen. She can't see them, but she can feel around for them and she's eager to have one. So she's working pretty hard at it. This may be the most serious exercise mama ever gets. She finds a cupcake, the coconut covered raspberry and marshmallow filled kind known as a snowball. But she sees there's one missing from the package. She calls to Jesse, who is apparently somewhere else in the house. Jesse, it's the last snowball sugar. Put it on the list, okay? And we're out of Hershey bars. And Where's that peanut brittle? I think maybe Dawson's been in again. I have to put a big mirror on the refrigerator door. That'll keep him out of my treats, won't it? Do you hear me, honey? Oh, I hate it when the coconut falls off. Why does the coconut fall off? Jessie enters from her bedroom carrying a stack of newspapers. You got any old towels? Here you are. Towels you don't want anymore. How about this uh, swimming towel that Loretta gave us? Beach towel, that's the name of it. You want it? Yeah. What have you been doing in there? And a big piece of plastic, like a, a rubber sheet or something. Garbage bags would do if there's enough. Don't go making a big mess, Jessie. It's eight o'clock already. Maybe an old blanket or towels we got in a soapbox sometime? I said don't make a mess. Your hair is black enough, hon. It's not for my hair, Mama. What about some old pillows anywhere? Or a foam cushion out of a yard chair would be real good. You haven't forgot what night it is, have you? Mm -hmm. They're all chipped, you see. Been waiting all week, Jess. It's Saturday night, sugar. I know, I've got it on the schedule. You want me to wash them now or are you making your mess first? Oh, we're out of these. Did I tell you that? There's more coming tomorrow. I ordered you a whole place. The whole case will go stale, Jesse. They can go in the freezer till you're ready for them. Where's Daddy's gun? In the attic. Where in the attic? I looked your whole nap and I couldn't find it anywhere. One of his shoe boxes, I think. Full of shoes, I looked already. Well, you didn't look good enough then. There's that box from the ones he wore to the hospital when he died. They told me I could have him back, but I never did like those shoes. I found the bullets. They were in an old milk can. Dawson took the shotgun, didn't he? Hand me that basket, huh? Dawson better not have taken the pistol. 
Now my glasses, please. I told him to take those rubber boots too, but he said they were for fishing. I told him to take up fishing. He's just too lazy to climb up there, Mama. Maybe he's just being smart. The floor's not very steady. It's not a floor at all, hon. It's a board now and then. Measure this for me. I need six inches. Johnson could probably use some of those clothes up there. Somebody should have them. You ought to call the Salvation Army before the whole thing falls in on you. Six inches, exactly. It's plenty safe, as long as you don't go up there. I'm careful. What do you want the gun for, Jess? Jesse opens the ladder in the hall. Protection. You take the TV way too serious, hon. I've never seen a criminal in my life. This is way too far to come for what's out here to steal. Never seen a one. Except for Ricky. Ricky is mixed up. That's not a crime. Get your hands washed. I'll be right back and get them real dry. You dry your hands till I get back or it's a no-go, all right? I thought Dawson told you not to go up those stairs. He did. I don't like the idea of a gun, Jess. What shoe box do you remember? Black. The box was black? No, the shoes were black. That doesn't help much, Mother. I'm not trying to help, sugar. We don't have anything anybody want, Jesse. I mean, I don't even want what we've got, Jesse. Neither do I. Wash your hands. But you come down from there before you have a fit. I can't come up and get you, you know. I know. We'll just hand it over to them when they come. How's that? Whatever they want, the criminals. That's a good idea, Mama. Now, Ricky will grow out of this and be a real fine boy, Jess. But I have to tell you, I wouldn't want Ricky to know we had a gun in the house. Here it is. Found it. It's just something Ricky's going through. Maybe he's in with some bad people. He just, he just needs some time, sugar. He'll get back in school or get a job one day. He'll get a call and he'll say he's sorry for all the trouble he's caused and invite you out for supper someplace dress up. Don't worry. It's not for him. It's for me. I didn't think you would shoot your own boy, Jesse. I know you felt like it. Well, we've all felt like it, shooting somebody, but we don't do it. I just don't think we need to... Um... Washed. Do you want a manicure or not? Yes, I do. Then your hands... Then wash your hands and... Don't talk to me anymore about Ricky. Those two rings he took were the last valuable things I had. So now he started on other people, door to door. I hope they put him away sometime. I'd turn himself in myself if I knew where he was. You don't mean that. Every word. Wash your hands and that's the last time I'm telling you. Jesse sits down with the gun and starts cleaning it, pushing the cylinder out, checking to see that the chambers and barrel are empty, then putting some oil on a small patch of cloth and pushing it through the barrel with the push rod that was in the box. Mama goes to the kitchen and washes her hands as instructed, trying not to show her concern about the gun. I should have got you to bring that milk can down. Agnes Flesher sold her to someone with a flea market for $40 a piece. I'll go back and get it in a minute. There's a wagon wheel up there too. There's even a churn. I'll get it all if you want. What are you doing? The barrel has to be clean, Mama. Old powder, dust gets in it. What for? I told you. And I told you we don't get criminals here. And I told you the gun is for me. Well, you can have it if you want. I mean, when I die, you'll get it all anyway. I'm going to kill myself, Mama. <laughs> Very funny. Very funny. I am. No, no, you're not. Don't even say such a thing, Jesse. How would you know if I didn't say it? You want it to be a surprise? You're lying there in your bed, maybe, or just brushing your teeth and you hear this noise down the hall? Kill yourself. Shoot myself in a couple of hours. Must be time for your medicine. Already. But then what's the matter with you? Not a thing. I feel fine. You feel fine. You're just going to kill yourself. Waited until I felt good enough, in fact. You don't make jokes, Jesse. I'm too old for jokes. It's not a joke, Mama. That gun's no good, you know. 
He broke it right before he died. He dropped it in the mud one day. Seems okay. Yes, he spins the chamber, cocks the pistol, and pulls the trigger. The gun is not yet loaded, so all we hear is the click, but it will definitely work. It's also obvious that Jessie knows her way around a gun. I had Cecil's already in there just in case, but I couldn't find it, so I'd rather use Daddy's. Those bullets are at least 15 years old. Jessie pulls out another box. These are from last week. Where did you get those? Feed store Dawson told me about. Dawson? I told him I was worried about prowlers. He said he thought it was a good idea. He told me what kind to ask for. If he had any idea what you were really- He a compliment. He thought I might be taking an interest in things. He got through telling me all about the bullets and then said, we had to talk like this more often. And where was I while this was going on? On the phone with Agnes, about the milk can, I guess. Anyway, I asked Dawson if he thought they'd send me some bullets and he said he'd just call for me because he knew they'd send him if he told them. And he was absolutely right. Here they are. How could he do that? He's trying to help, Mama. And then I told you where the gun was. See, everybody's doing what they can. You told me it was for protection. It is. I'm still doing your nails, though. Want to try the new China Berry color? Well, I'm calling Dawson right now. We'll just see what he has to say about this little stunt. Dawson doesn't have any more to do with this. He's your brother. And that's all. Dawson will put a stop to this. Yes, he will. He'll take that gun away. If you call him, I'll just have to do it before he gets here. As soon as you hang up the phone, I'll just walk in the bedroom and lock the door. You will not? This is crazy talk, Jesse. Dawson will get here just in time to help you clean up. Go ahead. Call him. Then call the police. Then call the funeral home. Then call Loretta and see if she'll do your nails. Mama goes directly to the telephone and starts to dial. But Jessie is fast, coming up behind her and taking the receiver out of her hand, putting it back down. I said no. This is private. Dawson is not invited. Just me. I don't want anybody else over here. Just you and me. If Dawson comes over, it'll make me feel stupid for not doing it 10 years ago. I think we better call the doctor. Or how about the ambulance? You like that one driver, I know. What's his name? Timmy? Get you somebody to talk to. I'm through talking, Mama. You're it. No more. We're just going to sit around like every other night in the world and then you're going to kill yourself? You'll miss. You'll just wind up a vegetable. How would you like that? Shoot your ear off. You know what the doctor said about getting excited? You'll cock the pistol and have a fit. I think I can kill myself, Mama. You are not going to kill yourself, Jessie. You're not even upset. People don't really kill themselves, Jessie. No, ma'am. Doesn't make sense unless you're retarded or deranged. And you're as normal as they come, Jessie, for the most part. We're all afraid to die. I'm not, Mama. I'm cold all the time anyways. That's ridiculous. It's exactly what I want. It's dark and quiet. Well, so is the backyard, Jessie. Close your eyes. Stuff cotton in your ears. Take a nap. It's quiet in your room. I'll leave the TV off at night. So quiet. I don't know it's quiet. So nobody can get me. You don't know what dead is like. It might not be quiet at all. What if it's like an alarm clock? You can't wake up. And so you can't shut it off, ever. Dead is everybody and everything I ever knew gone. Dead is dead quiet. It's a sin. You'll go to hell. Uh-huh. You will. Jesus was a suicide, if you ask me. You will go to hell just for saying that, Jesse. I didn't know I thought that. Jesse. Jesse puts the now loaded gun back in the box and crosses to the kitchen. You can't use my towels. They're my towels. I've had them for a long time. I like my towels. I asked you if you wanted that swimming towel and you said you didn't. And you can't use your father's gun either. It's mine now too. And you can't do it in my house. Oh, come on. No, you can't do it. I won't let you. 
This house is in my name. I have to go in the bedroom and lock the door behind me so they won't arrest you for killing me. They'll probably test your hands for gunpowder anyway, but you'll pass. Not in my house. If I'd known you were going to react like this, I wouldn't have told you. How am I supposed to act? Tell you to go ahead? Okay, by me, sugar. Might try it myself. What took you so long? There's no point in fighting me over it, that's all. You want some coffee? Your birthday's coming up, Jesse. Don't you want to know what we got you? You got me dusting powder, Loretta got me a new house coat, pink probably, and Dawson got me new slippers, too small, but they go with the robe, he'll say. Right? Be back in a minute. Jessie takes the gun box, puts it on top of the stack of towels and garbage bags, and takes them into her bedroom. Mama goes to the phone, picks up the receiver, looks toward the bedroom, starts to dial, and then replaces the receiver in its cradle as Jessie walks back into the room. I started to, but I didn't. I didn't call him. Good. Thank you. What is this all about, Jessie? About? Jessie now begins refilling all the candy jars, taking the empty papers out of the boxes of chocolates, etc. What did I do? Nothing. Want a caramel? You're mad at me. Not a bit. I am worried about you, but I'm going to do what I can before I go. We're not just going to sit around tonight. I made a list of things. What things? How the washer works, things like that. Did you grow up wearing dirty clothes? No. I know how the washer works. You put the clothes in, you put the soap in, you turn it on, you wait. You do something else, you don't just wait. Whatever else you find to do, you're still mainly waiting. Waiting is the worst part. Waiting is what you pay somebody else to do, if you can. Okay, where do we keep the soap? I could find it. See? If you're mad about doing the wash, we can get Loretta to do it. Oh no, that would be worth staying to see. She'd never in her life, would she? No. <laughs> What's the matter with her? She thinks she's better than we are. She's not. Maybe if she didn't wear that yellow all the time. The washer repair number is on a little card taped to the side of the machine. Loretta never doesn't ever have to come over here again. Dawson can just leave her at home when he comes, and, and we won't ever see Dawson either if he bothers you. Does, does he bother you? Sure he does. Be sure you clean out the lint tray every time you use the dryer, but don't ever put your house shoes in. It'll melt the soles. What does Dawson do that bothers you? He just calls me Jess like he knows who he's talking to. He's always wondering... What I do all day. I, I mean, I wonder that myself, but it's my day, so it's mine to wonder about, not his. Family is just an accident, Jesse. It's nothing personal, hon. Huh? They don't mean to get on your nerves. They don't even mean to be your family. They just are. They know too much. About what? They know things about you, and they learned it before you had a chance to say whether you wanted them to or not. They were there when it happened, and it don't belong to them. It belongs to you, only they got it. Like my mail order bra they got delivered to their house. By accident. All the same, they opened it. They saw the little rosebuds on it. Chewy mint. Now what do they know about you? I'll, I'll tell them never to talk about it again. Is it, is it Ricky or Cecil or your fits or your hair is falling out or, or you drink too much coffee or you never go out of the house? What? You just don't like their talk. The account at the grocery store is in Dawson's name when you call. The number's on a whole list of numbers on the back cover of the phone book. Wow. Now we're getting somewhere. There are none of them ever setting foot in this house again. It's not them, Mother. I wouldn't kill myself just to get away from them. You leave the room when they come over anyway. I, I stay as long as I can. Besides, it's you they come to see. Well, that's because I stay in the room when they come. It's not them. Well, then what? is it? The grocery won't deliver on Saturday anymore. 
And if you want your order the same day, you have to call before 10 and they won't deliver less than $15 worth. What I do is tell them what we need and then tell them to add cigarettes until we get to $15. It's Ricky. You're trying to get through to him. If I thought I could do that, I would stay. Make him sorry he hurt you then. That's it, isn't it? He's hurt me. I've hurt him. We're about even. You'll be, you'll be telling him killing is okay with you, you know. Want him to start killing next? Nothing wrong with it. Mom did it. Only a matter of time anyway. When the call comes, you let Dawson handle it. Honey, nothing says those calls are always going to be some new trouble he's into. You could get one that he's got a job. That he's getting married, or, or how about he's joined the army? Wouldn't that be nice? Call the sweet tooth before you call the grocery that Susie will take your fudge next door to the grocery and it'll all come together. Be sure you talk to Susie, though. She won't let them put it in the bottom of the sack like that one time, remember? Ricky could come over, you know. I mean, what if he calls us? It's not Ricky, Mama. Or anybody else could call us, Jesse. Not on a Saturday night, Mama. Well, then, then what is it? Are you sick? If your gums are swelling again, we can get you into the dentist in the morning. No. Can you order your medicine or do you want Dawson to? I've got a note for him. I'll add that to it if you want. Your eyes don't look right. I thought so yesterday. That was just ragweed. I'm not sick. Epilepsy is sick, Jesse. It won't kill me. If it would, I wouldn't have to. You don't have to. No, I don't. That's what I like about it. Well, I won't let you. It's not up to you. Jesse. I want to hang a big sign around my neck like daddy's barn. Gone fishing. You don't like it here. Exactly. No, I meant here, in my house. I know you did. You should never have moved back in here with me. If you'd kept your little house or found another place when Cecil left you, you'd have made some new friends at least, had a life to lead, had your own things around you. Give Ricky a place to come see you. You, you never should have come here. Maybe. But I didn't force you, did I? If it was a mistake, we made it together. You put me in. I appreciate that. You didn't have any business being by yourself right then. But I can see how you might want a place of your own. You could be as close or as far away as you wanted. A, a grown woman should. <laughs> Mama, I'm just not having a very good time and I don't have any reason to think it'll get anything but worse. I'm tired, I'm hurt, I'm sad, I feel used. Tired of what? It all. What does that mean? I can't say it any better. Well, you'll have to say it better because I'm not letting you alone till you do. And what were those other things? Hurt? Um, you, you, you had this all ready to say to me, didn't you? Did you write this down? How long have you been thinking about this? Off and on, 10 years. On all the time since Christmas. What happened at Christmas? Nothing. So why Christmas? That's it. On the nose. Yes, See where all this is? Candy away. See where all this is? Red Hots up front, Sour Balls and Whorehound mixed together in this one sack. New packages of toffee and licorice right back here. Get back to your list. You're hurt by what? Mama. Okay. I'm sad about what? There's nothing real sad going on right now. If it was after your divorce or something, that would make sense. Now this drawer has everything in it that there's no better place for. Extension cords, batteries for the radio, extra lighters, sandpaper, masking tape, Elmer's glue, thumbtacks, that kind of thing. The mouse traps are under the sink, but you call Dawson if you've got one and let him do it. Sad about what? The way things are. Not good enough. What things? Oh. Everything from you and me to red china. I think we can leave the Chinese out of this. There's extra light bulbs in a box in the hall closet and we've got a couple packages of fuses in the fuse box. There's candles and matches in the top of the broom closet, but if the lights go out, you just 
call Dawson and sit tight, but don't open the refrigerator door. Things will stay cool in there as long as you keep the door shut. I asked you a question. I read the paper. I don't like that how things are and they're not any better out there than they are in here. Well, if you're doing this because of the newspapers, I can sure fix that. Just more of it on TV. Take it out then. You wouldn't do that. Watch me. What would you do all day? Sing. <laughs> I, I would too. You want to watch? I'll sing till morning to keep you alive, Jesse. Please. No. It's a funny idea, though. What do you sing? <sighs> We've got a good life here. I called this morning and canceled the papers except for Sunday for your puzzles. You'll still get that one. Let's get another dog, Jesse. You like the big dog, didn't you? Yeah, that, that king dog, didn't you? I did like that king dog, yes. Oh, God, I'm so dumb. He's the one running under the tractor. That makes him dumb, not you. No, for bringing it up. It's okay. Handy wipes and sponges are under the sink. We could get a new dog, keep him in the house. Dogs are cheap. No. Jesse gets big pill jars out of the cabin. There's something for you to take care of. I've had you, Mama. You, you do too much for me. I can fill pill bottles all day, Jesse, and, and change the shelf paper, wash the floor when I get through. You just watch me. You don't have to do another thing in this house if you don't want to. You don't have to take care of me, Jesse. I know that. You've just been letting me do it, so I'll have something to do, haven't you? Well, I, I don't do it as well as you. I just I just meant if it tires you out or 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 makes you feel used, then Mama, um, I know you used to ride the bus. Riding the bus and it's hot and bumpy and crowded and, and too noisy and more than anything in the world you want to get off and the only reason in the world you don't get off is it's still 50 blocks from where you're going well i can get off right now if i want to because even if i ride 50 more years and get off then it's the same place when i step down to it whenever i feel like it i can get off as soon as i've had enough it's my stop i've had enough you're feeling sorry for yourself the plumber's helper is under the sink, too. You're not having a good time. Oh, well, whoever promised you a good time? Do you think I've had a good time? I think you're pretty happy, yeah. You have things you like to do. Like what? Like crochet. I'll teach you to crochet. I can't do any of that nice work, Mama. Good time. Don't come looking for you, Jesse. But you could work some puzzles or, or put in a garden, go to the store. Well, let's let's call a taxi and go to the AMP. I shopped you up for about two weeks already. You're not going to need toilet paper till Thanksgiving. You are acting like some little brat, Jesse. You're mad and everybody's boring and you don't have anything to do and you don't like me and you don't like going out and you don't like staying in and you never talk on the phone and you don't watch TV and you're miserable and it's your own sweet fault. And it's time I did something about it. Well, not something like killing yourself. Something like buying us all new dishes. I'd like that. Or maybe the doctor would let you get a driver's license now. Or, 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 or I know, let, well, let's do right this minute. Well, let's rearrange the furniture. I'll do that if you want. I always thought if the TV was somewhere else, you wouldn't get such a glare in the day. I'll do whatever you want before I go. You could get a job. I took that telephone sales job and I didn't even make enough money to pay the phone bill. And I tried to work at the gift shop at the hospital and they said I made people real uncomfortable smiling at them the way I did. Okay, you could keep books. You kept your dad's books. But nobody ever checked them. When he died, they checked them. And that's when they took the books away from me. Well, that's because without him, there wasn't any business, Jesse. You know I couldn't work. I can't do anything. I've never been around people my whole life except when I went to the hospital. I could have a seizure any time. What would what good would a job do? The kind of job I could get would make me feel worse. Jesse, it's true. 
it, it's it's what you think is true. That's right. It's what I think is true. Well, I can't do anything about that. No, you can't. And I can't do anything either about my life to change it, make it better, make me feel better about it, like it better, make it work, but I can stop it, shut it down, turn it off like the radio when there's nothing on I wanna listen to. It's all I really have that belongs to me and I'm going to say what happens to it and it's going to stop and I'm going to stop it. So let's just have a good time. Have a good time. We can't go flossing all night. I mean, I could ask you things I always wanted to know and you could make me some hot chocolate the old way. Thanks, Coco, Jesse. I bought Coco, Mama. And I'd like to have a caramel apple and do your nails. You didn't eat a bite of supper. Does that mean I can't have a caramel apple? Of course not. I mean, of course you can have a caramel apple. I thought I could. I make the best caramel apples in the world. I know you do. Or used to. And you don't get cocoa like mine anywhere else anymore. It takes time, I know, but... The salt is the trick. Trouble in everything. It's not trouble. What trouble? You put it in the pan and you stir it up. All right, fine. Caramel apples and cocoa. Okay. Jesse walks to the counter to retrieve her cigarettes as Mama looks for the right pan. She starts looking for a pan to make cocoa, getting all the pans in the cabinet out in the process. It looks like she's making a mess on purpose, so Jesse will have to put them all okay. away again. You talked to Agnes today? She's calling me from a payphone this week. God only knows why. She's a perfectly good trim line at home. Well, how is she? <laughs> how is she every day, Jesse? <laughs> Nuts. Is she really crazy or just silly? No, no, she's really crazy. She was probably using the payphone because she had another fi little fire problem at home. Mother. I'm serious. Agnes Fletcher's burned down every house she's ever lived in. Eight fires, as she and she's due for a new one any day now. No. Oh, wouldn't surprise me a bit. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me this before? Why is it she woke up somewhere? Because nobody ever got hurt, I guess. Agnes woke everybody up to watch the fire as soon as she set them. That's thoughtful, I guess. One time she set up porch chairs and served lemonade. <laughs> Real lemonade? <laughs> The houses they lived in. You knew they were going to fall down anyway, so why wait for it? It's all I could ever make out about it. Agnes likes a feeling of accomplishment. Good for her. Hmm. Mama finds the pan she wants. All right. Why are you asking me about Agnes? One cup or two? One. She's your friend. No marshmallows. You have to have marshmallows. It's the old way, Jess. Two or three, and three is better. Three then. Her whole house burns up. Her clothes and pillows and everything. I'm not sure I believe this. Exciting if she did. You never know. Oh, when I was a little, when I was a girl, Jess, not now, a long time ago, but she still got it in her. I'm sure of it. She wouldn't burn her house down now, but where would she go? She can't get Buster to build her a new one. He's dead. How could she burn it up? The exciting them up she did. <laughs> you never know. You do too, Mama. She wouldn't do it. No, I guess not. What else? Why does she wear all those whistles around her neck? Why does she have a house full of birds? I didn't know she had a house full of birds. No, well, she does. And she says they just follow her home. Well, I know for a fact she's still paying on the last parrot she bought. You gotta keep your life filled up, she says. Or she says a lot of stupid things. <laughs> it's all that okra she eats. 
You can't just willy nilly eat okra two meals a day and expect to get away with it. it made her crazy. She really eats okra twice a day. Where does she get it in the winter? Well, she eats it a lot, or maybe not two meals, but more than the average person. Well, I don't know how much okra the average person eats, Jesse. Do you know how much okra Agnes eats? No. How many birds does she have? Two. Then what are the whistles for? But they're not real whistles. They're just little plastic ones on a necklace she won playing bingo. And I only told you about it because I thought it might get a laugh out of you for once, even if it isn't the truth, Jesse. Things don't have to be true to talk about them, you know. Why won't she come over here? Mama lights the stove and starts stirring. Well, now that is a good idea. We should have had more cocoa. Cocoa, cocoa is perfect. perfect. You don't oh, like no. I hate milk. Coats her throat as bad as okra. Something just downright disgusting about it. It's because of me, isn't it? No, Jess. Yes, Mama. Okay, yes, then. She, but she's crazy. She's as crazy as they come. She's a lunatic. What is it exactly? Did, did I say something sometime? Or did she see me have a fit and it's afraid I might have another one if she came over or what? I don't guess. Guess what? What she ever said? She must have given you some reason. Your hands are cold. What difference does that make? Like a corpse, she says. And I'm going to be one soon enough as it is. That's crazy. That's Agnes. Jesse's shook the hand of death and I can't take the chance it's catching Thelma, so I ain't coming over and you can understand or not, but I ain't coming. I'll come up the driveway, but that's as far as I'll go. <laughs> I thought she didn't like me. She's scared of me. <laughs> oh, how about that scared of me? <laughs> I could make her come over here, Jessie. I could call her up right now and she could bring the birds and come visit. I didn't know you ever thought about her at all. I'll tell her she just has to come and she'll she'll come. All right, she, she owes me one. Well, that's all right. I just wondered about it. When I'm in the hospital, does she come over here? Oh, her kitchen is just a tiny thing. When she comes over here, she feels like, well, we all like a change of scene, don't we? Sure we do. Plus, there's no birds diving around. Oh, God, I hate those birds. She says I don't understand them, but then what is there to understand about birds? Why Agnes likes them, for one thing. Why they stay with her when they could be outside with the other birds. How much water they need. What their singing means. How they fly. What they think Agnes is. Why do you have to know so much about things, Jessie? There's just not that much to things that I could ever see. That you could ever tell, you mean? You didn't have to lie to me about Agnes. I didn't lie. You just never asked before. You lied about setting fire to all those houses and about how many birds she has and how much okra she eats and <gasps> why she would come over here. If I have to keep dragging the truth out of you, this is going to take all night. Well, that's fine with me. I'm not a bit sleepy. Mama. All right. Ask me whatever you want. Here. Did you love daddy? No. I didn't think so. Were you really 15 when you married him? The way he told it? I'm sitting in the mud. He comes along, drags me in the kitchen. And she's been there ever since. Yes. <laughs> no. It was a big fat lie, the whole thing. He just thought it was funnier that way. God, this milk in here. And the cocoa melts. Mm, not enough, though, does it? You can still taste it, can't you? Yeah, it's pretty bad. I thought it was my memory that was bad, but it's not. It's the milk, all right. 
real waste of chocolate. You don't have to finish it. Thanks, so. though. Should have known not to make it. I knew you wouldn't like it. You never did like it. You didn't ever love him or he did something and you stopped loving him or what? He felt sorry for me. He wanted a plain country woman and that's what he married. And then he had it and then he held it against me the rest of my life. Like I was supposed to change and surprise him somehow. I remember this one day he was standing on the porch and I told him to get a shirt on and he went in and got one. And then he said, real peaceful, but to the point, you're right, Thelma. If God had meant for people to go around without any clothes on, they would have been born that way. He didn't mean anything by that, Mama. Hmm. He never said a word. He didn't have to, Jesse. That was probably all he'd said to me that whole day, Jesse. So if he said it, there was something to it. I never did figure out that one. What did that mean? I liked him better than you did, but I didn't know him any better. How could I love him, Jesse? I didn't have a thing he wanted. He got his share, though. You loved him enough for both of us. You followed him around like some... Jesse, all the man ever did was farm and sit and try to think of somebody to sell the farm to. Or make me a boyfriend out of pipe cleaners and sit back and smile like the stick man was about to dance and wasn't I going to get a kick out of that? Or sit up with a, st a sick cow all night and leave me a chain of sleepy stick elephants on my bed in the morning. Or just sit. I liked him sitting. Big old faded blue man in the chair, quiet. Hmm. Agnes gets more talk out of her birds than I got from the two of you. He could have had that gone fishing sign around his neck in that chair. I saw him stare off at the water. I saw him look at the weather rolling in. I got where I could practically see the boat myself. But you, you knew what he was thinking about. And you're going to tell me. I don't know, Mama. His, his life, I guess, his corn his boots us things you know no i don't know jesse you with those quiet conversations after after supper every night what were you whispering about you weren't whispering you were just across the room what did you talk about we talked about why black socks are warmer than blue socks is that something to go tell mother you were just jealous because i'd rather talk to him than wash the dishes with you i was jealous because you'd rather talk to him than anything If I had died instead of him, he, he wouldn't have taken you in like I did. I wouldn't have expected him to. Then what would you have done? Come visit. Oh, I see. He died and left you stuck with me, and you're mad about it. Hmm. Not anymore. He didn't mean to. I didn't have to come here. We've been through this. Or maybe you'd think if I'd loved him more, or at all, he'd still be alive. Never thought that. He felt sorry for you too, Jesse. Don't kid yourself about that. He said you were a runt, and he said it from the day you were born, and he said you didn't have a chance. I know he only gets the canister of sugar and starts refilling the sugar bowl. And what if he did love you? Didn't change anything? Didn't have to. I miss him. He never really went fishing, you know, never once. His tackle box was full of chewing tobacco and all he ever did was drive out to the lake and sit in his car. Dawson told me. And Benny at the bait shop, he told Dawson. They all laughed about it. And he'd come back from fishing and all he'd have to show for it was a whole pipe cleaner family. Chickens, pigs, a dog with a bad leg. It was Creepy, strange. Made me sick to look at them. And I hit his pipe cleaners a couple of times, but he always had more somewhere. I thought it might be better for you after he died. You'd get interested in things, breathe better, change somehow. Into what? The queen, a clerk in a shoe store. Why should I? Because he said to? Because you said to? 
Well, I wasn't here for his entertainment. I'm not here for yours either, Jesse. I don't know what I'm here for, but then I don't think about it. But I bet you wouldn't be killing yourself if he were still alive. That's a fine thing to figure out, isn't it? That's not true. Oh, no? Then what were you asking about him for? Why did you want to know if I loved him? I just didn't think he did, that's all. I'm fine then. You were right. Do you feel better now? It feels good to be right about it. It didn't matter whether I loved him. It didn't matter to me and it didn't matter to him. And it didn't mean we didn't get along. It wasn't important. We didn't talk about it. Take all these pots out to the porch. What for? Just leave me with one pan. Give me one knife, one fork, one big spoon and the can opener and put them out where I can get them. Don't do that, I just straightened that drawer. And throw out all the plates and cups. I'll use paper. Loretta can have what she wants and Dawson can sell the rest. What are you doing? I'm not going to cook. I never liked it anyway. I like candy wrapped in plastic or coming in sacks and tuna. I like tuna. I'll eat tuna, thank you. What if you wanna make apple butter? You can't make apple butter in that little pan. What if you leave the carrots on cooking and burn up that pan? I don't like carrots. What if the strawberries are good this year and you want to go picking with Agnes? I'll tell her to bring a pan. You said you would do whatever I wanted. I don't want a bunch of pans cluttering up my cabinets. I can't even get down to anyway. So throw them out, every last one. I'm putting them all back in. I'm not taking them down to the porch. If you want them, they'll be here. You'll bend down and get them like you got the one for the cocoa. And if somebody else comes over here to cook, they'll have something to cook in and that's the end of it. Who is going to come here to cook? Agnes. In my pots, not on your life. There's no reason why the two of you couldn't just live here together, be cheaper for both of you and somebody to talk to. And, and if the birds bother you, well, one day when Agnes is out getting her hair done, you could take them all for a walk. So that's why you're pestering me about Agnes. You think you can rest easy if you get me a new babysitter. Well, I don't want to live with Agnes. I barely want to talk with Agnes. She's just around. We go back, that's all. I am not letting Agnes near this place. You don't get off that easy, child. Okay then, just something to think about. I don't like to think about things. I don't like things to think about. I like things to go on. I wanna know what daddy said to you the night he died. You came storming out of his room and said I could wait it out with him if I wanted to, but you were going to watch Gunsmoke. What did he say to you? He didn't have anything to say to me, Jesse. That's why I left. He didn't say a thing. It was his last chance to talk to me and he took, it was his last chance not to talk to me and he took full advantage of it. I'm sorry you didn't love him. Sorry for you. I mean, he seemed like a nice man. You ready for your apple now? As soon as I'm through here, Mama. You won't like the apple either. It'll be just like the cocoa. You never liked eating at all, did you? Any of it. What have you been living on all these years? Toothpaste? Yes, you know Jesse starts to clean up the refrigerator. Now, you know the milkman comes on Wednesdays and Saturdays and he leaves the order blank in an egg box and you give the bills to Dawson once a month. Do they still make that orangeade? It's not orangeade, it's orange. I'm going to get some. I thought they stopped making it. You just stopped ordering it. You should drink milk. Not anymore, I'm not. That hot chocolate was the last, hooray. I told them it's a garbage can from under the sink. I told them to keep delivering a quart a week, no matter what you said. I told them you run out of Cokes and you'd have to drink it. I told them I knew you wouldn't pour it on the ground. And you told them you weren't going to be ordering any more? I told them I was taking a little holiday in to look after you. And they didn't think something was funny about that? You who doesn't go down to the front steps, you who only see that you who only see the driveway looking down from a stretcher passed out cold. 
They said it was about time, but why didn't I take you with me? And I said, I didn't think you'd want to go. And they said, yeah, everybody's got their own idea of a vacation. I guess you think that's funny. You know, there was never any reason to call the ambulance for me. All they ever did for me in the emergency room was just to let me wake up. I could have done that here. Now, I'll just call them out and you say yes or no. I know you like pickles. Ketchup? Keep it. We've had this since last 4th of July. Keep the ketchup, keep it all. Are you going to drink ketchup from the bottle or what? How can you want your food and not want your pots to cook in? This stuff will spoil in here, mother. Nothing I ever did was good enough for you and I want to know why. That's not true. And I want to know why you lived here this long, feeling the way you do. You have no earthly idea how I feel. Well, how could I? You're real far back there, Jesse. Back where? What is it like over there where you are? Do people always say the right thing or get whatever they want or, or what? What are you talking about? I mean, why do you read the newspaper? Why don't you wear that sweater I made for you? Do you remember how I used to look or am I just any old woman now? When you have a fit, do you see stars or what? How did you fall off the horse, really? Why did Cecil leave you? Where do you put my old glasses? They're in the bottom drawer of your dresser in an old milk of magnesia box. Cecil left me because he made me choose between him and smoking. Jesse, I know he wasn't that dumb. I never understood why he hated it so much when it's so good. Smoking is the only thing I know that's always just what you think it's going to be. Just like it was the last time and right there when you want it and real quiet. Your fits made him sick and you know it. Say seizures, not fits, seizures. It's the same thing. A seizure in a hospital is a fit at home. They didn't bother him at all. Except he did feel responsible for it. It was his idea to go horseback riding that day. It was his idea I could do anything if I just made up my mind to it. I fell off the horse because I didn't know how to hold on. Cecil left for pretty much the same reason. He had a girl, Jesse. I walked right in on them in the tool shed. Okay. That's fair. Was she very pretty? She was Agnes's girl, Carlene. Judge for yourself. I guess you and Agnes had a good talk about that, huh? I never thought he was good enough for you. They moved here from Tennessee, you know. What are you talking about him? You liked him better than I did. You flirted him out here to build your porch and I'd never met him at all. You thought maybe he'd help you out around the place, come in and get some coffee and talk to you. God knows what you thought. All that curly hair. He's the best carpenter I ever saw. That little house of yours will still be standing at the end of the world, Jesse. You didn't need a porch, Mama. All right. So I wanted you to have a husband. And I couldn't get one of my own, of course. How were you going to get a husband never opening your mouth to a living soul? So I was quiet about it. So what? So I should have let you just sit here? Sit like your daddy? Just sit here? Maybe. Well, I didn't think so. Well, what did you know? I never said I knew much. How was I supposed to learn anything living out here? I didn't know enough to do half the things I did in my life. Things happen. You do what you can about them and you see what happens next. I married you off to the wrong man. I admit that. So I took you in when he left. And I'm sorry. He wasn't the wrong man. He didn't love you, Jesse, or he wouldn't have left. He wasn't the wrong man, Mama. I loved Cecil so much. And I tried to get more exercise and I, I tried to stay awake. I tried to learn to ride a horse. I tried to stay outside with him, but he always knew I was trying, so it didn't work. He was a selfish man. 
He told me once he hated to see people move into his houses after he built them. He knew they'd messed them up. I loved that bridge he built over the creek in the back of the house. It didn't have to be anything special. A couple of boards would have been just fine, but that yellow pattern and rubbed it so smooth. He had responsibilities here. He had a wife and a son here, and he failed you. Or that baby bed he built for Ricky. I told him he didn't have to spend so much time on it, but he said it had to last, and the thing ended up weighing 200 pounds, and I couldn't move it. I said, how long did a baby bed have to last anyway? But maybe he thought it, if it was strong enough, it might keep Ricky a baby. Ricky is too much like Cecil. He is not. Ricky is as much like me as it's possible for any human to be. We even wear the same size pants. These are his, I think. That's just the same size. That is not, you're the same, that's not you're the same person. I see it on his face. I, I hear it when he talks. We look out at the world and we see the same thing. Not fair. And the only difference between us is Ricky's out there trying to get even. And he knows not to trust anybody and he got it straight from me. And he knows not to try to get work. And guess where he got that? And he walks around like there's loose boards in the floor. And you know who laid that floor? I did. Ricky isn't through yet. You don't know how he'll turn out. Yes, I do. And so did Cecil. Ricky is the two of us together for all time in too small a space. And we're tearing each other apart like always inside that boy. And if you don't see it, then you're just blind. Give him time, Jess. Oh, he'll have plenty of that. Five years for forgery, ten years for armed assault. All right, stop that. Jesse, Cecil might be ready to try it again, honey. That happens sometimes. So just go downtown, find him, talk to him. He didn't know what he had in you. Maybe he sees things different now, or, but, but you're not going to know till you go and see him. Or call him up right now. He might be home. Say what? Nothing's changed, Cecil. I'd just like to look at you, if you don't mind. No. He loved me, Mama. He just didn't know how things fall down around me like they do. I think he did the right thing. He gave himself another chance, that's all. But I did beg him to take me with him. I did tell him that I would leave Ricky and you and everything I loved out here if only he would take me with him, but he couldn't. And I understand that. I wrote that note I showed you. I wrote it, not Cecil. I said, I'm sorry, Jesse. I can't fix it all for you. I said, I'd always love me, not Cecil. But that's how he felt. Then he should have taken you with him. Mama, you don't pack the garbage bag. Mama, you don't pack your garbage when you move. You will not call yourself garbage, Jesse. Just a way of saying it, Mama. Thinking about my list, that's all. He opens the can, putting the garbage in, and then secures the lid. Well, it's a little more than that. I'm trying to say that it's okay that Cecil left. It was a relief in a way. I never was what he wanted to see, so it was better when he wasn't looking at me all the time. I'll make your apple now. No, thanks. You get the manicure stuff and I'll be right there. Jesse ties up the big garbage bag in the can, replaces the small garbage bag under the sink, all the time desperately trying to regain her calm. Mama watches from a distance, her hand reaching unconsciously for the phone, then she has a better idea, or rather she thinks of the only other thing left and is willing to try it. Maybe she is even convinced it will work. Jesse, Jesse, I think your daddy had little- um, I would say it's Tuesday, put it out as late as you can, the Davis's dogs get out of the dog. And keep ordering the heavy black bags, it doesn't pay to buy the cheap ones. And I've got all the ties here with the hammers and all, Take them out of the box as soon as you open a new one and put them in this drawer. They'll get lost if you don't and rubber bands or something else won't work. I think your daddy had fits too. I think he sat in his chair and had little fits. 
I read this a long time ago in a magazine, how little fits go, just like little blackouts where maybe their eyes don't even close and people just call them thinking spells. Jesse gets the slip cover out of the laundry basket. I don't think you want this manicure we've been looking forward to. I washed this cover for the sofa, but it'll take both of us to get it back on. I watched his eyes. I know that's what it was. The mag magazine said some people don't even know they've had one. Daddy would have known if he'd had fits, Mama. No, the lady in the story kept track of her fits, and she said she had 80,000 of them in the last 11 years. Next time you wash this cover, it'll dry better if you put it on wet. Just listen to what I'm telling you. This lady had anywhere between five and 500 fits a day, and they lasted maybe 15 seconds a piece. So that's, that's out of her life. She, she'd only lost about two weeks altogether, and she had a full-time secretary job and an IQ of 120. You want to talk about fits, that's it? Yes, I do. I, I, I want to say that I didn't know I had one, except I would wake up with different clothes on, feeling like I'd been run over. Sometimes I feel my head start to turn around or hear myself scream. And, and sometimes there is this dizzy, stupid feeling before it, but if the TV's on, well, it's easy to miss. Jesse and Mama replace the slipcover on the table and the Afghan on the chair. I can tell when you're about to have one. Your eyes get this big. But Jesse, you haven't. What do they look like? The Caesars. They're different each time, Jess. Okay. Pick one. A good one. I, I think I want to know now. There's not much to tell. You just crumple in a heap, like a, a puppet, and somebody cut the strings all at once, or, or like the firing squad in some Mexican movie, you just slide down the wall, you know? You, you, don't know what, you, don't, you don't know what happens? How can you not know what happens? I'm busy. That's not funny. I'm not laughing. My head turns around and I fall down and then what? Well, your chest squeezes in and out and you sound like you're gagging, sucking air in and out like you can't breathe. Do it for me. Make the sound for me. No, I will not. It's awful sounding. Yeah. I felt like it might be. What's next? Your mouth bites down and I have to get your tongue out of the way fast so you don't bite it yourself. Or you. I bite you too, don't I? You got me once real good, yes. I had to get a tetanus. But I know what to watch for now. Then you turn blue and the jerks start up. Like I'm standing there poking you with a cattle prod or you're sticking your finger in a light socket as fast as you can. Foaming like a mad dog the whole time. It's bubbling, Jess, not foam, like the washer overflowed. For God's sake, it's bubbling like a baby spitting up. I, I go get a wa wet washcloth and that's all. And then the jerks slow down and you wet yourself and it's over. Two minutes tops. How do I get to the bed? What do you think? I'm too heavy for you now. How, how do you do it? I call Dawson, but I get you cleaned up before he gets here and I make him leave before you wake up. You could just leave me on the floor. I want you to wake up someplace nice, okay? Jesse, Jesse, and this is the reason I even brought this up. You haven't had a seizure for a solid year. A whole year, do you realize that? Yeah. The phenobarb's about right now, I guess. You bet it is. You might never have another one, ever. You might be through with it for all time. Could be. You are. I know you are. I sure am feeling good. I, I really am. The double vision's gone and my gums aren't swelling. No rashes or anything. I'm feeling as good as I've ever felt in my life. I'm even feeling like worrying or getting mad and I'm not afraid it will start a fit if I do I just go ahead yes of course you do 
You can even scream at me if you want to. I can take it. You don't have to act like you're just visiting here, Jesse. This is your house, too. The best part is my memory's back. Your memory's always been good. When couldn't you remember things? You're always reminding me what I need to I've made lists for everything. But now I remember what things mean on my lists. I see dish towels and I used to wonder whether I was supposed to wash them, buy them, or look for them because I wouldn't remember where I put them after I washed them. But now I know it means wrap them up. They're a present for Loretta's birthday. You used to go looking for your lists too. I've noticed that. You always know where they are now. Loretta's birthday isn't coming up, is it? I made a list of all the birthdays for you. I even put yours on it. So you can call Loretta and remind her. Let's take Loretta to Howard Johnson's and have those fried clams. I know you love that clam roll. I won't be here, Mama. But what have we just been talking about? You'll be here. You're, you're well, Jesse. You're starting all over. You said it yourself. You're remembering things and you feel... I won't be here. If I'd ever had a year like this to think straight and all before now, I'd be gone already. No, Jesse. Yes, Mama. Once I started remembering, I could see what it all added up to. The fits are over. It's not the fits, Mama. Well, then what? It, it, it's me for giving them to you, but I didn't do it. It's not the fits. Y you said it yourself. The medicine takes care of the fits. Your daddy gave you those fits, Jesse. He passed it down to you like your green eyes and your straight hair. It is not my fault. So if, what if he had little fits? It's, it's not inherited. I fell off the horse. It was an accident. The horse wasn't the first time, Jesse. You had a fit when you were five years old. I did not. You... You did. You were eating a popsicle and down you went. He gave it to you. It, it's, it's his fault, not mine. Well, you took your time telling me. Well... How do you tell that to a five-year-old? What did the doctor say? He said kids have them all the time. He said there wasn't anything to do but wait for another one. But I didn't have another one. You mean to tell me that I had fits all the time as a kid and you just told me I fell down or something and it wasn't till I had the fit when Cecil was looking that anybody bothered to find out what was the matter with me? It wasn't all the time, Jesse. And they changed when you started school, more like your daddy's. <laughs> there was some, some swell time sitting here with the two of you turning on and off like light bulbs some nights. How many fits did I have? You never hurt yourself. I never let you out of my sight. I caught you every time. But you didn't tell anybody. It was none of their business. You we're ashamed. I didn't want anybody to know, least of all you. Least of all me. Oh, right. That was mine to know, Mama, not yours. Did Daddy know? He thought you were... It... You fell down a lot. That's what he thought. You were careless. Or maybe, maybe he thought I'd beat you. I, I, don't, I don't know what he thought. He didn't think about it. Because you didn't tell him. Well, if I had told him about you, I'd have to tell him about him. I don't like this. I, I don't like this one bit. Well, I, did, I didn't think you'd like it. That's why I didn't tell you. If I'd known I was epileptic, Mama, I wouldn't have ridden any horses. What makes you feel like a freak? Is that what I should have done? Just get the manicure tray and sit down. No, I don't want a manicure. Doesn't look like you do now. Well, maybe I did drop you. You don't know. If you say you did, you didn't. Maybe I fed you the wrong thing. Maybe you had a fever sometime and I didn't know it soon enough. Maybe it's a punishment. For what? No, I don't know because of how I felt about your father because I didn't want any more children, because I smoked too much or didn't eat right when I was carrying you. It, it has to be something I did. It does not. It's just a sickness, not a curse. Epilepsy doesn't mean anything. It just is. I'm talking about your fits here, Jesse. I am talking about this killing yourself. 
It has to be me that's the matter here. You wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't. I didn't tell you things, or I married you off to the wrong man, or I took you in, or and, and let your life get away from you, or, or all of it put together. I don't know what I did, but I did it. I know. This is all my fault, Jesse, but I, and I don't know what to do about it now. It doesn't have anything to do with you. Everything has to do with me, Jesse. You can't do anything. Wash your face or, or cut your finger without doing it to me. That's right. You might as well kill me as well, Jesse. It's the same thing. This has to do with me, Jesse. What if it does? What if everything has to do with you? What if you are all I have and you're not enough? What if I could take all the rest of it if only I didn't have have you here? What if only way I could get away from you for good is to kill myself? What if it is I can still do it? Don't. Don't. Don't leave me, Jesse. Jessie stands for a moment, then turns for the bedroom. No. Mama grabs her arm. I have a box of things I want people to have. I'm just going to get it for you. You just rest a minute. Jessie is gone. Mama heads for the telephone, but she can't even pick up the receiver this time and instead stoops to clean up the bottles that have spilled out of the tray. Jessie returns carrying a box that groceries were delivered in. Jessie. Jessie, how can I live here without you? I need you. You're supposed to tell me how to stand up straight and say how nice I look in my pink dress and drink my milk. You're supposed to go around and lock up so I know we're safe for the night. And when I wake up, you're supposed to be out there making the coffee and watching me get older every day. And you're supposed to help me die when the time comes. I can't do that by myself, Jesse. I'm not like you, Jesse. I hate the quiet. And I don't want to die. And I don't want you to go, Jesse. How can I? How can I get up every day knowing you had to kill yourself to make it stop hurting? And I was here all the time and I never even saw it. And then you gave me this chance to make it better, convince you to stay alive and I couldn't do it. How can I live with myself after this, Jesse? I only told you so I could explain it. So you wouldn't blame yourself so you wouldn't feel bad. There wasn't anything you could say to change my mind. I didn't want you to save me. I just wanted you to know. Stay with me just a little longer. Just a few more years. I don't have that many more to go, Jesse. And as soon as I'm dead, you can do whatever you want. And maybe with me gone, you'll have all the quiet you want right here in the house. And, and, and maybe one day you'll, you'll put in some begonias up the walk and just get the, the right rain for them all summer. And, and Ricky will be married by then and he'll bring your grandbabies over and you can, you can sneak them a piece of candy when their daddy's not looking and, and, and then be real glad when they've gone home and left you to your quiet again. Don't you see, Mama, everything I do winds up like this. How could I think you would understand? How, how could I think you would want a manicure? We could hold hands for an hour and then I could go shoot myself. I'm sorry about tonight, Mama, but it's exactly why I'm doing it. If you've got the guts to kill yourself, Jesse, you've got the guts to stay alive. I know that. So it's really just a matter of where I'd rather be. Look, maybe I can't think of what you should do, but that doesn't mean there isn't something that would help. You find it. You think of it. You can keep trying. You can get brave and try some more. You don't 
have to give up. I'm not giving up. This is the other thing I'm trying. And I'm, I'm sure there are some other things that might work, but might isn't good enough anymore. I need something that will work. This will work. That's why I picked it. Something might happen, something, something that could change everything. I mean, who knows what it might be, but it, but it might be worth waiting for. Just, just try it for two more weeks. We can have more talks like tonight. I'll, I'll pay more attention to you, to tell you the truth when you ask me, just let you have your say. No, Mama, we wouldn't have more talks like this tonight because it's the next part that's made this last part so good, Mama. No, Mama, this... This is how I have my say. This is how I say what I thought about it all, and I say no to Dawson and Loretta and the Red Chinese and Epilepsy and Ricky and Cecil and you and me and, and hope I say no. Just let me go easy, Mama. How can I let you go? You can because you have to. It's what you've always done. But you are my child. I'm what became of your child. I found an old baby picture of me. And it was somebody else. Not me. It was somebody pink and fat who never heard of sick or lonely. Somebody who cried and got fed and reached up and got held and kicked but didn't hurt anybody and slept whenever she wanted to just by closing her eyes. Somebody who mainly just laid there and laughed at the colors waving around over her head and chewed on a polka dot whale and woke up knowing some new trick nearly every day and rolled over and drooled on the sheet and felt your hand pulling my quilt back up over me. That's who I started out. And this is who's left. That's what this is about. It's somebody I lost all right. It's my own self, who I never was or who I tried to be and never got there. Somebody I waited for who never came and never will. So see, it doesn't much matter what else happens in the world or in this house even. I'm what was worth waiting for and I didn't make it. Me who might have made a difference to me. I'm not going to show up, so there's no reason to stay except to keep you company. And that's not reason enough because I'm not very good company, am I? No. Neither am I. I had this strange little thought. Well, maybe it's not so strange. Anyway, after Christmas, after I decided to do this, I would wonder sometimes what might keep me here? What might be worth staying for? And you know what it was? It was maybe if there was something I really liked, like, Maybe if I really liked rice pudding or cornflakes for breakfast or something, that might be enough. Rice pudding is good. Not to me. And you're not afraid? Afraid of what? Afraid of it. For me, I mean, when, when my time comes, I know it's coming, but yeah, no, I mean, I'm afraid of it. Like, you know scary movie yeah sneaking up on me like some killer on the loose hiding out in the backyard just waiting for me to have my hands full someday and how am I supposed to protect myself anyhow when I don't know what he looks like and I don't know how he sounds coming up behind me like that 
if it will hurt or take very long or, or what. I don't get done before it happens. We've got plenty of time left. I forget right for right. Forget what for right now. For whatever happens, I don't know. For the rest of your life. For Agnes burning down one more house or <laughs> Dawson losing his hair. <laughs> just, just, I can't just sit here and say, okay, kill yourself if you want to. Sure you can, you just did. Say it again. Just see, just see how dare you? How dare you? You think you can just leave whenever you want, like you're watching television here? No, you can't, Jesse. You make me feel like a fool for being alive, child, and you are so wrong. I like it here, and I will stay here until they make me go, until they drag me screaming, and I mean screeching into my grave. And you're real smart to get away before then, because I mean, honey, you've never heard a noise like that in your life. Who am I, who am I talking to? You're gone already, aren't you? I'm looking right through you. I can't stop you because you're already gone. I guess you'll think they'll all have to talk about you now. I guess you think this will really confuse them. Yes, ever since Christmas, you've been laughing to yourself and thinking, boy, are they all in for a surprise? Well, you know, nobody is going to be a bit surprised, sweetheart. I mean, this, this, is, this, this, is, this is just like you. Do it the hard way. That's my girl, all right. You know who they're going to feel sorry for? Hmm? Me. How about that? Not you. Me. They're going to be ashamed of you. Yes, ashamed. And if somebody asks Dawson about it, he'll change the subject as fast as he can. He'll talk about how much he has to pay to park his car these days. Leave me alone. It's the truth. I should have just left you a note. Yes! Hmm. Oh, I, I, I might have not thought of all the things you've, you've said. It's okay, Mom. I remember you liked that preacher who did daddies. So if you want to ask him to do a service, that's okay with me. What? And pick some songs you like. Get Agnes to pick. You know she'll know exactly which ones. Oh, and I I had your dress cleaned, the one you wore to Daddy's. You looked real good in that one. I don't remember how. It won't be so bad once your friends start coming to the funeral home. You'll probably see people you haven't seen for years, but. I thought about what you have to say, you know, so you can get over the nervous part when they first come in. Come in. Take them up to see the flowers. They'd like that. And when you say, when they say, I'm sorry, Thelma, you just say, I appreciate your coming, Connie. And then ask how their garden was this summer or what they're doing for Thanksgiving or how their children are or... I don't think I should ask about their children. We'll talk about what they have on, that's always good. And I'll have some crochet work with me. And I will be there, so you might not have to talk at all. Maybe if Connie Richards does come, I can get her to tell me where she gets that Irish yarn, she calls it. I know it doesn't come from Ireland. I think it just comes with a green wrapper. And be sure to invite enough people home afterwards so you get enough food to feed them all and have some left for you. But, but don't let anybody take anything home, especially Loretta. 
Well, Loretta, we'll get all the food set up, honey. It's only fair to let her have some macaroni or something. No, Mama. You have to be more selfish from now on. Now, somebody's bound to ask you why I did it, and you just say you don't know. That you loved me, and you know I loved you, and we just sat around tonight like every other night of our lives, and then I came over and kissed you and said, night, mother. And you heard me close my bedroom door and the next thing you heard was the shot. And whatever reasons I had, well, you guess I just took them with me. It was something personal. Good. That's good, Mama. That's what I'll say then. Personal, yeah. Is that what I tell Dawson and Loretta too? Oh, you sat around. You kissed me. Night mother, they'll, they'll, they'll want to know more. Jesse, they won't believe it. Well then, tell them what we did. I filled up the candy jars. I cleaned out the refrigerator. We made some hot chocolate and put the cover back on the sofa. You had no idea. All right? I really think it's better that way. If they know we talked about it, they really won't understand how you let me go. It's private. Tonight is private, yours and mine. And I don't want anybody else to have any of it. Okay, then. Now, when you hear the shot, I don't want you to come in. First of all, you won't be able to get in by yourself. I don't want you trying. Call Dawson, then call the police, and then call Agnes. And then you'll need something to do till somebody gets here to wash the hot chocolate pan. You wash that pan till you hear the doorbell ring, and I don't care if it's an hour, you keep washing that pan. I'll make my calls and then I'll just sit. I won't need something to do. What will the, what will the police say? They'll do that gunpowder test and ask you what happened. And by that time, the ambulance will be here and they'll come in and get me. And you know how that goes. You stay out here with Dawson and Loretta. You keep Dawson out here. I want the police in the room first, not Dawson, okay? What if Dawson and Loretta want me to go home with them? That's up to you. I think I'll stay here. All they've got is Sanka. Maybe Agnes could come stay with you for a few days. Oh, I'd rather be my, by myself, I thank you. You want me to give, you want me to give people those things? I want Loretta to have my little calculator. Dawson bought it for himself, you know, but then he saw one he liked better and he couldn't bring both of them home with Loretta counting every penny the way she does. So he gave the first one to me. It'd be funny for her to have it now, don't you think? <laughs> and all my house slippers are in a sack here in the closet. Tell her I know they'll fit and I've never worn any of them and make sure Dawson hears you tell her that. I'm glad he loves Loretta so much, but I wish she knew not everybody has her feet size. Okay. This letter is for Dawson, but it's mostly about you, so read it if you want. There's a list of presents for you for at least 20 more Christmases and birthdays, so if you want anything special, you better add it to the list before you give it to him. Or if you want to be surprised, just don't read that page. This Christmas, you're getting mostly stuff for the house, like a new rug in the bathroom and needlework. But next Christmas, you're really going to cost him next Christmas. I think you'll like it, and you'd never think of it. And you think he'll go for it? I think you'll feel like a real jerk if he doesn't. Me telling him like this and all. Now, this number's where you call Cecil. I called it last week and he answered, so I know he still lives there. What do you want me to tell him? Tell him we talked about him and I only had good things to say about him. But maybe tell him I'm ready for him uh, and tell him what I did and tell Ricky you have something for him out here for me and, and to come get it. She pulls an empty sack out of the box. What is it? Watch. 
He puts it in the sack, tying a ribbon around it. You know, he'll sell it. That's the idea. I appreciate him not stealing it already. I'd like to buy him a good meal. He'll buy dope with it. Well, then I hope he gets some good dope with it. Mama. And the rest is for you. When did you do all this? During my naps, I guess. I guess. I tried to be quiet about it. Those are just little presents for whenever you need one. They're not bought presents, just things I thought you might like to look at. Pictures or things you think you've lost. Things you didn't know you had even. You'll see. Well, I'm not sure I want them. They'll make me think of you. No, they won't. They're just things like a free tube of toothpaste I found hanging on the door one day. Oh, oh, oh all right then. Well, maybe there's one nice present in there somewhere. It's Granny's ring she gave me, and I thought you might like to have it, but I didn't think you'd wear it if I gave it to you right now. No. No, probably not. Um, I'm ready for my manicure, I guess. Do you, uh, do you want me to wash my hands again? It's time for me to go, Mama. No, no, Jesse, J Jesse, you've got all night. No, Mama. It's, it's not even 10 o'clock. Let me go, Mama. No, I can't. I can't. I can't. You can't. You can't go. You can't do this. You didn't say. You didn't say it would be so soon, Jesse. I'm scared. I love you. Let go of me, Mama. I said everything I have to say. You said you wanted to do my nails. I can't. It's it's too late. It's it's not too late. I don't want you to wake up Dawson and Loretta when you call. I want them to still be up and dressed so they can get right over. They wake up fast, Jesse. If if they have to, they, it doesn't it doesn't doesn't matter here, Jesse. They don't matter. You do. I do. We're not through yet. We've got lots of things to take care of here. I I I don't know where my my prescriptions are, and and you didn't tell me what to tell Doctor Davis when he calls, or or how much you want me to tell Ricky, and 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 who who I call to 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 break the leaves. And um, oh, please stop me, Mama. You can't do it. No, I can. I can too. I can. I will stand in front of this hall, and you can't get past me. You'll have to knock me down to get away from me, Jesse. I am not about to let you. Mama struggles with Jesse at the door. And in the struggle, Jesse gets away from her. My mother. Jesse vanishes into her bedroom and we hear the door lock just as Mama gets to it. Jesse! Jesse, you let me in there! Don't you do this, Jesse! I am not going to stop screaming until you open this door, Jesse! 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 What if I don't do any of the things you told me to do? I'll tell Cecil what a miserable man he was to make you feel the way he did, and I'll I'll give Richie, Ricky's watch to Dawson if I feel like it, and, 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 and the only way you will make sure I do what you want is to come out here and make me, Jesse. Jesse! Jesse, stop this! I didn't know I was... I was here with you all this time. How could I know you were so alone? Jesse, please. Forgive. I thought you were mine. She leaves the door and makes her way through the living room, around the furniture, as though she didn't know where she was, not knowing what to do. 
Finally, she goes to the stove in the kitchen and picks up the hot chocolate pan and carries it with her to the telephone and holds onto it while she dials the number. She looks down at the pan, holding it tight like her life depended on it. She hears Loretta answer. Loretta, let me talk to Dawson, honey. Blackout. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Such great work, you guys. Bad for a first read. Oh my God, not bad for a first read. <laughs> Imagine what we could actually do if we rehearsed. <laughs> oh, I know. Well, it, it, you know, and, and you can see what I meant when I said I really didn't want to read. I wanted to read as little stage directions as possible. I always felt like I was intruding, even though, you know, we had agreed on them. But I it, know. I, I, it's a lot of the ones that were at the beginning of the lines, I just... It was so hard to remember. and I know, and that's what always happens. And of course, what happened in between since we last talked was you actually got comfortable with using the props. So I, I stopped, a, a couple of them I didn't say, as you know, yeah. because I could see you were ready. But I also didn't want to you guys to be going, I thought she was going to read that. <laughs> yeah. um, I think but, it's so hard because when I read it out loud, I don't read the stage direction, so I'm not used to yeah. having that rhythm added in. Of course, and, and it isn't there. I mean, I found, you know what really I felt profoundly was that I can't be there. Like there's nobody else. There's just these two women. And I, sh I a third person can't be there. Right. So the, the, you know what I mean? So the stage directions are another person, which is not good. But, the, but anyway, it was, it was wonderful. It was amazing what you, what you managed. I don't know if uh, anybody, um, we, we seem to have a non-video participant still who is welcome to turn on Show their, yourself. Show yourself, show yourself, <laughs> please, if you wish. Um, well, we'll just, we'll just start talking. Uh, if people want to join us for this, they, they, they can, but we can also talk, you know, to other, to our friends and whatever separately. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to hear from you guys was, you know, given the fact that right now in this, this climate at the moment, um, the whole idea of depression and mental illness is a, ma a major issue, right? We, there's a lot, we're talking a lot about it and we're trying to take care of people and, and support people. And what does this play do to that, with that dialogue, like that conversation? How does this play fit into that conversation? I mean, oh. I, th I think, I don't know. I don't have a lot of experience with, um, no one close to me has ever taken their own life. Um, but I, what's really interesting is, is that this play allows for that often unheard side to, it gives a voice to that often unheard side. I mean, yeah. you know, most, most of the time and what I've heard is that people, people, sometimes they know somebody has been suffering. Um, sometimes it's a surprise, but, but usually the, the reasons for which, or even the act itself comes out of, is, is a shock um, and unexpected. And, and I think what's really interesting about this is that, is that we hear her rationale, her side of it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, 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 I personally feel that that it's okay for someone to decide they've had enough. Hmm. Like the, the stigma that surrounds someone taking their own life. I don't, I don't understand that. I feel that it's, it's perfectly justified for someone to, to decide for whatever reason, whether they've had enough. And I, I find it interesting that, that, that here we get that, we get that played out in a way that, that I would, I would assume a lot of people don't get that opportunity well what do you what do you think Georgia well kind of like what you brought up about sort of the decision for people taking their own life a, a, a job that I have or I had outside of acting um I was a phone fundraiser and I called for a charity called dying with dignity which was about um 
medically assisted dying. And I had a lot of conversations like that about who has the right to decide whether you live or not. And about, in those cases, it was more for people who were in, you know, a vegetative state or had some kind of illness that was going to take their life, unlike something like epilepsy. But it was talking about sort of people who were being forced to be alive against their will when they're really suffering and they and they don't really have much of a life left. And with Jesse, obviously, she doesn't have a life-threatening illness, but that that's the thing is that like she's planning this whole thing out because and has to plan it so intricately because for some reason you're not just allowed to do this you know she has to make sure that she doesn't implicate her mother and all these things um but this is her way of of her asserting her agency mm -hmm. and having a say in in her own life and th this is definitely something that i i talk to people about a lot and they said you know you know, for instance, my father who had dementia, you know, I know he wouldn't want to live the way he's living, but he's being forced to because he doesn't have a say in it. So that I think is very similar to what she's going through. And and given with like what's going on right now and, and mental illness in, in quarantine, I mean, they say it in the play, she never leaves the house. She's basically quarantined herself. And, yeah. and it's just, you know, it's, it's almost like having a sort of physical disability where you're, you're confined to a chair or something like that. Um, but she just feels confined, not just to her house, but by everything mm -hmm. and doesn't see a way out and really sees this as a release. And, and, and it, it, I would never want to, you know, encourage anyone to go to that you know, instead of seeking help, but you think about it in these times and like just all the horrible things that have happened in, in 2020 and just the feeling of hopelessness that just is like permeating all the time. You know, mm -hmm. even I, this is a bit off topic, but you know, I saw last night that Chadwick Boseman died yeah. and my heart just sank and it was just this pure feeling of hopelessness. And it's just this, it's really resonant right now because it is so hard to convince yourself that there's a reason to keep fighting. Really hard. Well, what I find so striking in this play is how much autonomy Jesse has. Like this decision has, you know, she talks she talks about not being able to hold down a job and and yet for the this entire play, she's doing a huge job. She's mm -hmm. functioning extremely well. She's incredibly well organized. Mm -hmm. She's got something to work toward and that's really working for her. And of course the, the tragedy is with Thelma, was with the mother. She's the one with this, who gets the, you know, plank in the face surprise. And, uh, and so it really brings up the question of, you know, who you leave behind too. Mm -hmm. right? and, mm -hmm. You know what, and, and, and one, one can only assume that Jesse has thought about that. And that's part of why she wants to have this night with her mom to prepare her as well as she possibly can, not knowing that it would sort of do the opposite. But, but, but in the end, it does work because in the end, she does grab the, the, the hot chocolate pan and go to the phone and do what you said. She does it. Yeah. yeah, she does it. So she wouldn't have known what to do. Yeah, if you'd had if you hadn't had this evening, but like it's we assume a story about suicide is the victim is the person committing suicide that that's where the tragedy is and it it, it is a tragedy, but uh, it, this shows us that uh, in fact it was mother who the mama who was who was really yeah. and in terms of it being a tragedy like yes of course it is a tragedy and it's tragic mostly for her mother but it's kind of like, like, I love the part where she says, you know, it's like, don't give up. It's like, I'm not giving up. I'm making a choice. And, yeah. and the real tragedy was the rest of her life that came before that, you know, mm -hmm. it was a horrible, tragic life. And she had no passions, no, like she, her husband left her. She had epilepsy, like all these horrible things happened. This is the one time where she gets to decide. And she's trying by having this conversation to end it on a high note, you know, get all those things that she always wanted and then feel satisfied. So it's kind of interesting to see, yeah, the dynamic between them where it's like her mother thought everything was fine. She didn't realize it was a tragedy yeah. until it wasn't for Jesse anymore. Kind of. Right. And of course it's a tragedy in the most classic sense that someone dies. 
yeah. you know, that, that it just technically it's a tragedy for that reason. But, um, but you're right there for, for Jesse, it's, it's a release. It's a, um, it's a journey and she's passing through to something else that for her is, is better. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Wow. Wow. It's, it, and it's mom that we're, you know, it's the heart where our hearts are broken into a million pieces, F listening to how mom is reacting, right? All the way through this. I realized that, like, listening to you guys, it's like, what would I do? What would I do? What would I do if, like, you know, someone I was close to uh, laid this on me? You know, how would I react? And, yeah. and I, I love how uh, easy it is for Thelma to actually slip back into the ordinary. Like even in the height of the crisis, as you're describing the funeral, you can still talk about the Irish wool. <laughs> like, it, 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 you know, the real life, the ordinary of life just insert, inserts itself again. We don't live on the plane of high tragedy and high drama. Mm -hmm as humans right we, we try to bring it down to earth we try not to cry we try not to see the crisis we want to make it ordinary isn't that wonderful like it's well it's also it's also taking an example from her daughter right who said okay this is what's going to happen and i'm going to kill myself and uh but we have things to do yeah. there's the practical thing like things that we need to think about and so she's she's unconsciously probably you know that has rubbed off on her on the the, the, the practical side of of yeah. what the funeral is going to be like about what it is going to be like after and what people are you know yeah it has it has it has penetrated it yeah. has it, jesse has managed to get you thinking about yourself at the funeral and what you would do and how you would act and say oh yeah i bring crocheting well, that makes me think of the wool that whatever that's right yeah yeah, yeah that's great yeah. that's great and i think about how you know jesse has been taking care of her mother for years and doing literal you know physical tasks around the house but also it's it, it gets away from her a little bit but for the most part she knows how to deal with her mother and she she is surprised a bit by her reaction i guess maybe because she just doesn't because she doesn't think of herself as good company so she doesn't think her mom would mind but she knows how to frame it and exactly what to say sort of or she thinks she knows what to say to calm her down and that's sort of the struggle of where it's like I just I didn't think you were gonna you've never seemed to care that much before we always were just able to talk like this it's yeah and her fury when, when mom really gets furious when she finally kind of snaps at the end I think that is a big surprise for Jesse that 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 wow and, and I think then in the way that that's almost the that's the part that's tragic for Jessie is that her mom does not accept her decision you know I think she really just wanted this to go off without a hitch and just do the manicure and have the apple and have the cocoa and and it was just like as the night goes on even though she's still getting all her tasks done things aren't quite going as she wanted to she never has the apple the 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 milk tastes bad and of and course not like, of yeah. course not. it's impossible to plan this sort of that's what's brilliant yeah. about this play you know she's got it all planned out mm -hmm. down to the minutia and none of it goes the way because mom doesn't react the way you think she will <laughs> which, which is what I think it's it's so interesting because I, I get that this is probably a family that doesn't talk about things that doesn't share yep. things certainly feelings ever and so the the probably it's probably surprising for for Thelma too because now all of a sudden there's feelings that have come into this equation right in terms of this night and this conversation yeah. and 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 you know I love the the talking about the father and the feeling jealous about that and and um the guilt that she feels that that everything that bad that has happened in Jesse's life has, has been um, her fault. And all of these things that have never, ever been spoken about mm -hmm. and probably wouldn't have been spoken about, right? Where they just hear, they just, ah! and yeah, yeah, yeah. which is, which is shocking for Jesse and also shocking to experience as well. Right. 
year yeah. how many years how many years 40 50 years of, of suppressed emotion right yeah yeah and I, I i also couldn't help but detect you know in when when when, when mother does say um, oh, well, then I guess it's all my fault. That sort of defensive, that, that huge defensiveness. And of course, the uh, objective is to get Jesse to say, no, 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 it's not, you're, you're, you're absolved. But mm -hmm. right. doesn't go there. Yeah. That makes it worse for Jesse because their whole thing is like, this is, this is the moment I've been waiting for for so long and you're making it about you. Yeah, yeah. You know, I wanted certain things and you're derailing the conversation. You're making me talk about you. And it's like, it's not, it's not about you. It's about me. And I'm like, pissed that you're that you're taking it there and I I can't help but think you know yeah she wanted it to go off well and she was going to be so satisfied and pleased with herself and and she's always talking about how she wants quiet but then when she finally goes to do it her mom is grabbing at her and banging at the door and screaming and so when she finally dies she doesn't have that quiet that she wanted it's this sort of horrific well, yeah, yeah. yeah and what's so interesting there when you say it's about her it's like the very fact that you the, the moment you tell mama then it, it does become about mama because everything you do in this play is preparing, it's getting stuff prepared for mama, for what she can do after getting stuff filled for her. Like everything you do is for her. So essentially it is, <laughs> it is about me. It's everything is about me. Yeah, I feel like I'm like, I thought you would appreciate that I put so much thought into helping you. Like, why are, why are you being so difficult when I've done all these great, tasks for you it's, yeah and of course we were talking the other day about how brilliant the structure of this play is because it's so fabulous that there's a piece of enormous information that jesse has not known mm -hmm. so with all your planning and all of everything to have a curveball thrown uh massive curveball and it really registered in this reading like the that you really I feel like it it that is the moment where it kind of does become about mama because it's like you didn't do anything i'm it it, it, ta it takes jesse's agency away because it's like i thought that this was all just inevitable accidents happen and my life has been shitty ever since but now i know that you you kept important information from me that could have made my didn't life have, easier and well, now yeah i didn't have to fall off that horse yeah 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 yeah, yeah. whoa oh there's much to unpack yeah. Oh, so much. I mean, even still, even going through and, you know, having had it this week and then just reading it today and, you know, even there, there were a couple of things I would say something. I'd be like, ah, oh, no, I missed that. Yeah, yeah. But well, yeah, it, that wasn't it. That wasn't it. <laughs> like, ah, oh, shit. Yeah. But yeah, there's just so much you're discovering as you go, right? Oh, completely. And of course, it's it's when you're when you're becoming emotional and it becomes hard to read. Like, I, I know that. Oh, I couldn't see. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Technically, it becomes hard to read. Like it's, you, you, you've gone so far into the whole experience, and then the page becomes like, ah, yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. I, it was always hard for me when it's like something super emotional happened, and then it's back to listing all the things that you have to do. It's like making that switch, and while you're reading it, while I'm not moving with my whole body, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bizarre but you, experience, but but you did move with your whole body. I loved that. I loved <laughs> when you got up and you know left the, the the frame and all of that was great. I, I find that really helps. Super loved handing the the cup of cocoa to her and taking it. You know that's those moments are really for the watcher. And, and at one point we both had the uh, yes the, the yeah. thing right. So I, I was like, I know we're actually doing it. Yeah, I know exactly. Exactly. If we could, re if we had rehearsed it, like you said, if we had, we didn't just talk about it, but actually rehearsed it, you would have gotten more and more confident, right, with with I, what you can do. Yeah, I think the the only thing that was sort of the hardest part for me in terms of reading is just the well, one, the fact that I could see myself is it's just a huge distraction. Oh, you know, you, you can you can get rid of that. I yeah, I know. I was more just worried about being in frame because I was constantly oh, moving, yeah. So yeah. I wanted to know that I was like visible or yes, you know my stuff but yeah. um I, I changed to speak review at some point and that kind of helped but I noticed that I was looking at myself and I was like no and then it was also hard because then I would I wouldn't look at myself but then it was like I really wanted to make eye contact but we couldn't and it was just like I just wish oh man I know, I know. I know. <laughs> it's all an illusion like this 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 form can never be anything but an illusion we can become better at it so that it appears that you can see each other. 
um, for, from the audience's point of view, but you will never really be able to. And that I'm is always, I'm always amazed because I always think, okay, well, yeah, I'm looking at, and then somebody will take a screenshot yeah. of their screen. And I'm like, nobody's where <laughs> they were on my screen. Like right. nobody's in the same, who knows where I was looking. That's it's, right. Yeah. You know. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. Speaking of screenshot, I'm going to take it. Easy picture. to get caught up in the little, little distractions, but you know, we try. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a, ch I mean, you know, we're all, we feel the impulse to try to make this the best it can be, but I felt that this reading, you really were able to go a, a layer deeper because you had thought about it more. We had talked about it twice. We had discussed the actions a little bit and it just gave it, it, it just lifted it to the next level. And that that's really uh, an important part of this. I think. I feel like this is a play that a cold read would, be yeah. difficult oh, yeah. you know because you'd be surprised like in the moment and be like i don't know how to react to this new information yeah right 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 exactly 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 yeah yeah well it's it's a great play man it's a great play yes i love that monologue of jesse's about the uh the the person i became but oh, I, yes you know, I, yes I'm like i bookmarked that i'm like i'm at a good age for that yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, i mean it's yeah it's so interesting hearing her explain it and i think it it makes a lot of sense and it's so heartbreaking and it's just it i mean i feel like that is the one time where it does sound like she's sort of giving up but it's like you know what but but it's the best way of saying like it's not you it's me it's 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 all but, about me. I mean, I saw I saw the balloon over your head where you actually digested the stage direction that said there's no self pity. Mm -hmm. I saw it happen in real time, and it, you and it was really interesting because you changed you you did this fabulous shift where you, because it was going towards self pity. Like you you probably felt that yourself. You went. Oh, it's no. hard not to when I know, you're but then you caught it. Like, you caught it. You pulled it back, and it got so interesting. Like that moment, if you can watch it back, you know mm -hmm. that moment. Was, was so much deeper because of course it isn't about self-pity because if it was, then mom would be able to talk her out of it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's not, it's, it's, it's completely factual. It's scientific, mm -hmm. it's scientific. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, I would love to do this play. <laughs> Me too, I guess in, in probably in like 20 years, but you know. <laughs> I know, I know, I know exactly. Well, so you know. <laughs> start working on it but yeah. Yeah, excellent thank you so much for everything that you put into it thank I'm you really, really grateful thank to you it was really yeah. nice really nice yeah and I, I really liked having this much screen time just with two people back and forth mm -hmm. that it just you get pulled into a world so thoroughly um you, you really succeeded with that it was great it's wonderful it was fun That's yeah good. yeah Good, good, thank you. All right, I guess that's it, unless there's anything else you wanna say? I think that's no, that's thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, this was so fun. Yay, okay, good. There'll be more, we'll do more. But thank and thank you. you for introducing me to this play, oh my gosh, I've never heard of it, it's amazing. <laughs> well, it's been around for a while, it's an older play, but uh, it, like I said to you guys, it had really, it had a profound effect on me back in the day. Mm -hmm. But it's still, I think, so relevant. Like it's, yeah. it's a, a, at the heart, it's a relationship between mother and a daughter. It's, it's, yeah. um, you talk about mental illness. I love how she said, you know, I know what's going on in the world. That's yeah, you know, being, you know, like, it's, there's, I mean, there were a few references that were dated and, you know, certainly talking about like the groceries being, well, the groceries are being delivered now, but, um, yeah. <laughs> but I mean like, so, so those things dated and you couldn't really change that because, um, yeah. Yeah that's the that's the crux of what jesse is trying to do but i think the heart of it is still so 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 relevant yeah. absolutely it's, you know, it's long enough ago that it's almost a period piece you know yeah. it's, it's early 80s so we're getting to a point where you know there's nothing wrong with saying we're in an, at a time where the phone is attached to the wall right yeah. the phone is you know got a curly thing <laughs> it's not a cell phone yeah. Well, even even with the cell phones, I mean, I'm working on a piece right now with uh, with Charlie and Mahalis and um, which would have been 20 years ago and talking about how cell, we, we had cell phones, but we didn't use them 
as we use them now. We all still had landlines um, and uh, that the cell phones weren't our go-to. Like they weren't, they didn't, they were there, but they certainly didn't behave. And Charlie's like, so what is this with the three rings? And I'm like, well, that would usually be, there'd be three rings and then your answering service would kick in. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like you could set that. You could set how many rings you want yeah. before your answering service kick in. Yeah. That's right? right. Like, so it's yeah. not just like the person hung up or I didn't answer. No, it was that many rings. And the answer is like talking about, and that was only 20 years ago. Right. So. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So oh my God. Yeah. All right. Good. Well, okay, enjoy then. the rest of your, how is it? Is it hot there, Georgia, or is it broken? It is it's pretty humid i had the ac blasting before this but i turned it off because it was sort of making it hard to hear but uh oh, it's right. it's a bit muggy it's not it's gray today it's like oh, right. almost raining but not quite so it's not right. it's not i i have nowhere else i'd rather be <laughs> right <laughs> that's good that's good excellent Perfect. all right well thank you both thank uh, you soon. okay bye bye you can leave